Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the second in a series of video tutorials on how to make a visual city in Unity 5. Okay, so if you remember uh, last episode, we had a look at the most basic features and functions of Unity. Uh, we looked in the hierarchy, uh, asset window, inspector and scene view. Uh, we created just a few uh, cubes. So in this episode what we're going to be looking at is putting some textures onto our cubes and expanding a little more and having just a general play around. So the first thing to do is if you drag this asphalt texture, now you can either search for this yourself or you can uh, download it from our website. There will be a link in the uh, description. Okay, so that hasn't worked. Best thing to do then. On here where it says assets, oh, it has it, sorry. We'll do this anyway. Right click, create folder. So let's try and keep things as tidy as possible. So we'll call this textures. And then drag and drop into there. So now down here, you should have a subfolder of assets with textures and in there is asphalt. And in this main window, if you haven't got this, make sure you save. So if you haven't saved already, go to File and Save Scene. And you can save the scene as anything. I've just called it City for now. But once you save it, it will appear just here. Okay, so now we have the asphalt texture right here. All I'm going to do is drag and drop here. And it's that simple. You'll notice over here that a folder called materials has been created. Now usually what we would have done in previous versions of Unity is right click and create a new material to make this. However, when you apply a texture straight to an object, it automatically creates this material. Okay, so now we have applied our uh, asphalt to this cube here. If you click on it, you'll see a few different options just here, as usual. If you go to the top here, this little button, and go to Debug, the options change slightly. So if you go down this list, here we can debug some properties. Now the reason I use debug is because it, um, even though we are beginners, it enables you to kind of get accustomed to a few different options within the debug. So when you get to a more advanced level, you feel a bit more comfortable using the debug window. So if you click on save properties, go here to the texture properties or texms and click on element 0 and then click on second. Now there are plenty more elements to play with but for now the only one we're going to look at is this second one and you'll notice here it says scale. If you click on the X and let's have a play. So let's type in 10. You'll notice here in scene view it changes a little how our texture looks on our object. So if we change Y to 10, it makes it look even different. Now the reason that's happened, if we zoom in, we can see that the texture itself is now kind of duplicating itself. It's a, it's a seamless texture. So rather than just apply one of these to one of them, it applies several of these on that scale to this one cube. So if you're looking for your own texture to put onto this cube, you would need to search for a seamless texture. Now you can set this to pretty much anything, depending on how you want it to look. So if we set it to 5 and 5, you'll notice it looks a little different. That's because there is only five across and five up. So we'll leave it as five and five just for now. 
So what we'll be doing with this particular asphalt texture is rather than create more or create different ones, because we're it's a road and we already know where we want our road to go, we can just use the same cube over and over. Now many people think that having too many objects, too many cubes within Unity uh, kind of lags and slows it down. That isn't true until you get to several thousand objects even on a basic PC. Now keep in mind that these are just basic cubes so you can have many more of these than you can of uh, other objects that you've imported. I'll explain a little bit more about um, how Unity will lag in a later tutorial when we have many more uh, cubes. Okay, so if you click on here now and hold control, press D to duplicate, as we did with the shop in the last episode, if you remember, it creates a duplicate and automatically renames it. So if you hold control and pull the red arrow on the X axis and align it just there, you'll see that here. Our two objects are now connected, well not connected, but right up against each other. They've been snapped together and look seamless with the texture. So the next thing to do is we will put a texture on this uh, sidewalk just here. So again, drag and drop your texture into the textures folder in the asset window. And again, if, if you've used the one on our site, um, the texture itself here is a seamless texture. So, like I say, if you're going to look for your own texture, make sure you uh, get a seamless texture. Okay, so just like we did with the asphalt, drag and drop straight there. And again, you'll notice the texture itself kind of stretches one of itself all over the cube. So make sure you've got this selected just here, your uh, arrows. Click on the object and if you're not still in debug, remember just go up here and click on debug. At the very bottom, hopefully this should all still be um, expanded. So let's set our scale. Now we will be using this exact same texture all the way around for our sidewalk, so let's make sure we get this right. It won't be quite the same as what we have for our asphalt. If we put in 5.5, five, you'll notice it's still not quite square, so we need to play around a little. So let's zoom in so we can see it more accurately. So let's put this on a scale of, let's put 2 to 1. Okay, so that's how we need to scale it virtually, at sort of two to one. Let's check our size first. Yes, so two to one hopefully should do the trick. So let's put this as eight and four. Let's zoom out a little. Okay, so do we think that looks appropriate? Possibly. Possibly, it may do. So what we'll do for now is, just like we did with everything else, hold control, press D to duplicate, and then keep holding control and pull the red arrow, which is the x-axis, and just align up right there. And you'll notice they, uh, they mingle literally perfectly right there. So that looks just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to put our little man in there. I say little man, it's uh, it'll be I'll be doing, using first person on this one, but I will show you how to Im, uh, import third person. Uh, so what we do is down here in the asset window, right click, go to create, uh, not create, sorry, import package. My apologies, and you'll need here characters. So if you click characters, you'll get this window that says decompressing package. 
Now all this is, is just a package which is pre-built for Unity and if you click on import it brings in um, everything you could possibly need for a basic first person and third person character. If you want to go further uh, by all means you can. I won't be dealing too much with modifying these particular um, sort of uh, packages but uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay so we just have to wait a few minutes for this to uh, import. It may be a little slow because it is uh, quite a few little bits of assets within. Um, but while we wait, I will quickly explain what we're going to do with this sidewalk, possibly in the next tutorial. Our intention is to put uh, an entrance to a subway somewhere around here, where I'm moving the arrow now. So we'll need to kind of adjust this sidewalk here. But because we want to use the same sidewalk all the time, we're going to shrink the size, shrink the scale, but kind of double it up a little so we have three sidewalks but that that will make more sense when we uh, get round to it okay so now we have our standard assets imported click here on the little arrow and you'll see this characters just here click the arrow again and here you have a first person controller physical materials, rollerball and third person. So I'm going to use first person controller into prefabs and then this first one which is FPS controller dot prefab. Simply drag and drop that in anywhere into your scene, absolutely anywhere. Now chances are when you do that, let's double click on him, it's kind of intersected with the floor a little. What you'll need to do is simply drag up above the floor. You'll notice the green uh, section here kind of is still within the floor. You need to pull your character so it's all of the green is out of the floor so there's nothing intersects. Okay, so if you want to use a third person character uh, there is another little mini tutorial that I have created quite recently uh, on how to put a third person into a game. There will be a link in this uh, description if you want to head over there and use a third person. Okay, so now we've put our first person within there. I am going to go up here, click normal, and then I'm going to rotate our character by 180 degrees on the y-axis. Now you'll notice here these white lines have changed. The white lines are the camera control. If you click the arrow you'll notice that there is a character with a camera on him. And if we scroll down here it should be... it's not there but there is a camera right there. So if we press play, and we can move around. So now what we are doing is we are having our first glimpse of our game. So let's zoom out a little more and let's move our character by dragging the blue arrow over onto the asphalt. Now. As we have just played our game and we are confident there is a camera within our first person controller, we can go over here to main camera and press delete. We no longer need that camera. So if we press play again, and we are straight into our scene, what we have created. Our asphalt looks fairly decent, our sidewalk looks fine. We can easily walk up, we don't need to kind of jump up onto the sidewalk, so we know we've placed that just fine. The blocks, uh, the squares could do with adjusting on the um, sidewalk, but like I explained earlier, we'll be adjusting that anyway, possibly in the next tutorial. You'll notice as you walk along, you can hear your character's footsteps. This is something that's already pre-built into Unity and is quite a nice feature. 
There is also the kind of bobbing motion up and down as you walk to give it a kind of realistic feel. That's also pre-built into Unity, so you don't need to worry about playing around with that. Now if you want to, if you want to play around with your character and adjust the settings, his walk speed, run speed, anything like that, have a look around within these settings. And remember, if you accidentally um, change anything and can't figure out how to change it back, you can always delete your character and then re-import. So let's put walk speed just as an example, let's put that as 20. And we press play. And now we're walking really quite fast. So we've changed that and for some reason we can't remember what we've changed and we can't figure out how to um, put our character back to normal. Easiest thing to do, hit that delete button in your hierarchy and you'll notice the character gets deleted. So it's just a simple case of re-importing your character straight in. So let's set that to 180 so he faces the shops. So if we press play again, our character is back to normal. Okay, so that is the end of this second tutorial. Uh, like I explained, in the next tutorial we'll possibly look at putting in a subway entrance, uh, we'll texture some shops, and we will also um, delve into little hidden naughty bits, as they were, within Unity, i.e. that here you can see that there's a little hidden bit. Them hidden bits that the user never sees come in quite handy because it means you have a little room for um, playing around with. So as I said, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.